Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin R051 OTG receiver that supports both iOS and Android devices. Inside the box we're getting the Ishin R051 OTG receiver, an SMA linear antenna, a micro USB to micro USB cable and a micro USB to female USB adapter. The main difference between the 051 and the 01 is that the 051 supports both iOS and Android devices and it is done by using this switch. In addition, the 051 has a built-in battery and it is like in this port that allowed you to output the video and audio to an external device and it has only a micro USB connector on the bottom. Turning on the device is done by long pressing the on and off switch. Now you can see a blue indicator is present and it indicates iOS is chosen. If you switch to Android, you can see the LED indicator turns green. In addition, the supported antenna is an SMA antenna and the ROTG01 supports RP SMA antennas. The front dimensions are almost the same, but you can see that the R051 is thicker due to the built-in battery. The R051 is a little bit heavier than the OTG01. It weighs 28.56 grams and the 01 weighs 18.63 grams, so it's about 10 grams heavier than the 01. Unfortunately, the 051 does not work with the same software that the ROTG01 works with and the GoFPV app does not work for me and you have to install another app which in Android was a little bit suspicious and it's not done for the Google Play so I'm not going to show you how it works and if you plan to use this device with an Android or PC or Mac I think that it's better to get the ROTG01 just for the fact that it works with regular apps and you don't have to download external ones which may be suspicious. In addition, I will tell you again in advance that DVR is not supported on iOS and you will have to use screen recording in order to record your video. So it's another big disadvantage of the R051 because on the ROTG01 you can just record DVR without any issues with the provided software and it is one of the big advantages of using this device just to record your videos on the phone and you're not going to be able to do it out of the box with the R051. So let's connect it to an iPad to see how it works. So first connect the lightning cable into your iOS device. By the way, the supported operating system is iOS 8 and above and iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S are not supported. Then connect it to the female USB adapter and connect the micro USB to the bottom of the R051. Then connect the antenna if it's not already connected and turn on the device by holding the power on button. You have to turn on the iOS switch and if no supported software is going to be present, it's going to lead you to the app store where you can download either utils or another app but you will have to download utils. You can see that now it opened utils and I need to allow it to communicate with the device. Then you have to press the Ishin icon. Over here we have the help menu that shows us all the options of the app and there are not many options, it's very easy. Over here we can control the brightness, 3D VR, which will allow you to use it with VR goggles. Album, it shows you all the pictures that were taken. Take a snapshot. You can see over here the channel value, the battery status of the device. Right now it's charging itself from the iPad and the channel strength. So let's go back, hit play. Now no device is transmitting, so I'm going to connect the camera and scan for the best signal. I'm going to connect the TXO5 camera. Now it's connected, it's on F7. We can switch the channels by either single pressing the scan button and now you can see it changes all the channels. But if you want to search for the best signal, just long press the scan button and it's going to find the best signal and then it's going to lock itself on it. You can see that 5860 was the best signal, 5865. And now we can see the picture. The picture quality is pretty good, but we can see even without measuring the latency that it's not as smooth as the ROTG01 worked on my phone. It might have to do with your device. Maybe if I had a newer device, the latency will be better. So I can only test it with this iPad 2. Maybe if you have an iPhone 7S or an iPhone 8, it's going to work better. As I mentioned earlier, you won't be able to record DVR just by pressing a button. Like for example, I just took a snapshot and then you can access the snapshot from here, from the photo library. You can see at the moments, 
and now you can see the picture that was taken but taking pictures is not a very useful feature and recording DVR is a much more important one. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the latency and then I'm going to show you how it is possible to record the screen on your iPhone or on your iPad. So let's start the timer. So we can see that the average delay is about 150 to 200 milliseconds. So it's much higher than the latency that I got with the ROTG01. Again, maybe using a faster device will lead to better results. Now, by the way, I did try to connect it to my computer, like the ROTG01. Unfortunately, it doesn't recognize this device. And this is just black because my web camera is covered. If I'm going to connect the ROTG01, it's going to recognize it. So I tried both on iOS and Android. It just doesn't work. So I'm not sure that you can use it with your computer. I'm not sure that you can't, but I'm not sure that you can as well. Now I'm gonna show you how to record your screen. In order to do so, you will have to upgrade to iOS 11. It's not going to work on earlier versions. What you need to do, go to settings, then go to control center, customize controls, hit the plus next to the screen recording, then you need to swipe from the button, press this button, it's going to start recording your screen, now your screen is recorded, then connect the R51 if it's not already connected, then open Utools, hit play, and right now it's been recorded. I didn't show earlier, but when you press this button, now you can see we have these two screens, and when you want to stop the recording process, just swipe from the button, hit this button, and it's going to end the recording session. It was saved to your photos. Then you can just go to your gallery and it's going to be under videos and you will be able to play it. You can see now the video is playing. Again, it's not as convenient as using the RTG01 on Android devices, but still you have a way of recording your videos. So overall, I don't think that the 051 is as useful as the 01 for a couple of reasons. First of all, it does not support a desktop computer out of the box as the 01 does. Maybe it does support it, but it didn't work for me and probably it's not going to work for you as well. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section below and I will put in the description box an explanation how to get it to work with your computer. Second of all, it does not support Android devices with the FPV Go app. So we'll have to download an external app just from the web and I'm not sure if it is safe to use it. So you can try it on your own risk and let me know if it works well, but I've downloaded it and I just deleted everything because it was a little bit suspicious for me. So I just removed it from my device. And finally, the price is almost double than the Zero One. This one you can get right now for about $18 and this one costs about $35, $36. So basically, I recommend buying this device only if you have a, an iPad or an iPhone and you want to share the FPV experience with your friends. It's probably not going to be usable for FPV, but just to share the FPV experience and to show your friends how it looks when flying your quadcopter, I think it might be a good buy. But if you have an Android device, don't get it, get the 051, it will give you a better experience and that's about it. So as always, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.